Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. When you create a form, there may be certain fields that you want to make sure your visitors fill in. This is why FrontPage allows you to set validation rules for some of the field types. Validation rules are settings you can select to restrict the type and amount of information in a field as well as make certain fields mandatory. Text boxes, text areas, option buttons, and drop-down boxes can all have validation rules applied to them. To set the validation rules for any of these fields, simply double-click the field to view its properties, and then click the Validate button. First, let's take a look at the text box. The text box and text area have the same validation options, so to save time, we'll just look at the text box. First, you can use the Data Type drop-down to restrict the type of data that can be entered into the field. You can specify text, integers, or numbers. If you select integers, this means whole numbers only, such as 1 and 2, but not 1 and a half or 1.5. If you select number, this can be any number at all. If you select text, then you must select a text format, either letters, digits, white space, or other, or you can select more than one. So, for example, if you wanted this field to be for a first name, you could select letters and white space. This would give you the ability to let people that have a two or three part first name still enter their name with the proper spacing. Once you select one of these options, then you can enter the display name. The display name is what will display as the name of the field in an error message if a visitor breaks the validation rules for this field. You don't have to fill in the display name right now, as you can wait until you've selected all of your other options first. So we've taken a look at text. Now let's take a look at integers. If you select integer, or number from the data type drop-down, you'll then need to select a numeric format. You can select a grouping method, either with a comma, a period, a space, or none. And if you select number from the data type drop-down, you can also select a decimal, either a comma or a period. So let's say, for example, you're trying to create a credit card number field. For this, you want to select integer with the grouping set to none. That way there are no commas or periods placed in someone's credit card number. Then, whether you choose text, integer, or number from the data type drop-down, you can set the data length options and the data value options. If you'd like this field to be a mandatory field, you can put a check mark in the required checkbox. Then you can set a minimum length that the field must be and a maximum length. If the field must contain an exact number of characters or numbers, you can enter the same number into the min length and max length fields. So, for example, credit cards. There's 16 digits in length. You could have a minimum length of 16 and a maximum length of 16. In the data value section, you can restrict the data to specific values. To do this, first, Select the Field Must Be checkbox. Then, select the criteria. The field must be less than, greater than, less than or equal to, 
greater than or equal to, equal to or not equal to. Once you select a criteria, enter a value into the value field. If you need another criteria, you can select the and must be checkbox, then select another criteria and enter another value. Now if we were still going on the credit card number example, you'd want to make sure that neither of these checkboxes were selected. Again, when you're finished selecting all of your options, be sure the display name is accurate. Since I changed this from a first name field to a credit card number field, I'll probably want to switch my display name to credit card number. When you're finished, click OK. When you get back to the Properties dialog box, be absolutely sure you click OK and not Cancel. Clicking Cancel will ignore any of the changes you just made for the validation rules. Now let's take a look at the Option button. Again, double click it to see its properties and then click the Validate button. The Option button has one simple option. If you'd like to make this option required, put a check mark in the Data Required checkbox. Then, enter a name. This could be used if you had a Terms of Use policy the visitors had to agree with before they could proceed. Obviously, there are other uses. This is just an example. Again, once you're finished, click OK. And then, click OK in the Properties dialog box. Now let's take a look at the drop-down box. Again, double-click the field to view its properties, and then click the Validate button. The options here are much like the options for the Option button, but you have one additional option. Again, if you'd like to make this a mandatory field, put a check mark in the Data Required checkbox. And then, if you want to make sure visitors cannot select the first choice and send that to you as their selection, put a check mark in Disallow First Choice. As we stated when we were covering the properties of the drop-down box, you can have the first choice in the drop-down box be instructions for that particular field, such as select one or pick one. This is how you would make sure your visitors picked a choice other than select one. Again, you'll need to enter a display name and click OK. Then again, on the Properties dialog box, click OK. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.